Now I want to talk to you about earthquakes. We'll start with earthquake formation. So what causes an earthquake? Well, you need an oceanic plate and a continental plate. They move towards each other. The oceanic plate is denser than the continental plate, so it is subducted under the continental plate. It's forced underneath and there's a buildup of friction which is released at that plate boundary in the form of seismic waves which are felt. Now the center point of the earthquake is known as the focus and then the point on the earth's surface directly above the focus is known as the epicenter and that's where the strongest seismic waves are felt. What device is used to record the size of an earthquake is known as a seismograph not to be confused with the scales used to measure the intensity of an earthquake. These are known as the Richter scale, the moment magnitude scale, MMS, and the Macaulay scale. Earthquakes form at destructive plate boundaries, and that's because the oceanic plate over time is getting destroyed as it's subducted under the continental plate. I'm sure you're aware, but one result of an earthquake is the formation of a gigantic wave known as a tsunami. So how do tsunamis form? Tectonic plate movement can trigger an earthquake which releases shock waves. Those shock waves cause waves on the sea's surface. When the wave splits, it then becomes amplified as it approaches the shore, generating the huge waves you associate with a tsunami. As we've already mentioned, earthquakes occur along tectonic plate boundaries. 80% of earthquakes occur around the Pacific Ocean where the Pacific plate is being subducted beneath the surrounding plates and that's why this area is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. So what sort of damage do earthquakes cause? Obviously any tsunamis that are generated flood low-lying land, damaging infrastructure, people's homes, destroying crops and again simply the tremors caused by the earthquake may do exactly the same here. This leads to homelessness, it leads to governments needing to rebuild infrastructure, it leads to the development of makeshift settlements it can lead to damage to water supplies, gas pipelines, electricity pylons. Why are some people more susceptible to tectonic hazards such as earthquakes? Well, first of all, they live close to a plate boundary. Clearly, as I've already said, plate boundaries are where earthquakes occur. So therefore, these people will be more likely to be affected compared with people who live in the center of a tectonic plate. Population density also has a huge role to play. Mega cities contain huge numbers of people and therefore large numbers of people are likely to be affected in the event of an earthquake occurring. Some countries are more vulnerable to earthquake events compared with others. This is often due to money, so there could be a lack of early warning systems in some countries, meaning that people don't know when they need to leave their homes, when they need to move to safer areas. You could find that in places with less money that the buildings aren't reinforced appropriately, with concrete exoskeletons, meaning they're more likely to collapse. This kills people and also means that their homes are more likely to be destroyed. Even in the event of the earthquake occurring, different countries have different responses, so differing abilities to treat injured people, to evacuate them to safer areas. Let's list the short-term impacts of an earthquake. So damage to infrastructure, damage to crops, damages to services such as hospitals, there could be tsunamis due to the shockwaves occurring under the ocean. There could be landslides, mudslides, flooding. This will be likely due to the tsunami. The longer term impacts of an earthquake are largely the financial costs, repairing services, infrastructure, damaged roads. And I'm going to run you through a past paper question that really looks in greater depth at the short and long-term impacts of an earthquake. Study figure 3c in the resource booklet analyse the short and long-term impacts of the earthquake event. We're going to give an overview using our knowledge, what we've studied in class on our own, reading textbooks etc. We're going to discuss all the short and long-term impacts of earthquake events and then we're going to analyse, that means use the information provided in figure 3c to look at the extent to which this particular earthquake event affected people both in the short and long term. So we'll start with a general statement saying that there's a range of short and long term impacts of earthquakes and these vary due to the size and intensity of the earthquake as well as the location. It's always worth writing this sort of thing to begin with in this type of question. So we'll start with general statements about short term impacts include tremors which damage buildings, shatter glass, etc. 
which could lead to debris. This may kill and injure large numbers of people. Long-term impacts now include homelessness, contaminated water supplies. This means that a government will need to spend lots of money fixing these issues. And now we're going to check out figure 3C. So in order to maximise our chance of getting eight marks in this question, we really need to look in depth at figure 3C, which shows details about an earthquake event in Haiti, a developing country, in 2010. So we're going to work our way around the figure, starting here with this key, perceived shaking. So obviously, the darker the shade of blue, the more extreme shaking that the area receives. So you can see that violent shaking is experienced down here at Port-au-Prince, Carrefour, Grecia and Ligan. So I'm just going to make a note here that a large area experiences violent shaking. And name a place such as Port-au-Prince. So we're really focusing in our answer on figure three. We'll now look at this table. We have a population of 9.95 million, short-term impacts, 220,000 people killed. Goodness me, that's absolutely horrific. So a massive number of people, 300,000 people injured on top of that. So really flushing this out, a large number of people affected. And that's a short-term impact. Now let's look at the longer term impact. Two million people with poor access to food and water. Obviously, that's going to have huge knock on effects. 1.3 million people homeless. And we can see outbreaks of cholera and that will be due to the poor access to clean drinking water, potentially poor sanitation. So we can see huge disruption to infrastructure. So let's start to write out our answer now. So figure 3C shows that a large area of Haiti was subjected to violent shaking, e.g. Port-au-Prince. There were severe short-term impacts, and we're going to list how many people died. 200, and, gosh, what a number. 220,000 people died, and 300,000 people were injured. Long-term effects include water contaminated with cholera and a large number of people made homeless. We can really point out that figure 3C constantly refer to the figure so they know that you're using the data suggests a high level of disruption to infrastructure. As with tropical cyclones, why do people continue to live in areas which are susceptible to earthquakes? Primarily because despite the fact that they know the risks, they may not have the financial means to move away from a particular area. They could have established their families, they don't want to leave them. Remember, places where there's high population, so mega cities, are going to be more susceptible to the damage caused by earthquakes. Now I'm going to take you through preparation for earthquakes, such as warning and evacuation, building design, remote sensing and GIS. So I'll take you through a past paper question, first of all, for building design. This says one way, but I wanna give you several examples. You wanna talk about steel frames that sway during an earthquake. You could talk about rubber shock absorbers in foundations. 
So through both of these things, you'll find that buildings are less likely to be damaged during an earthquake and less likely to create debris. You could talk about buildings having lightweight roofs. and safety glass and windows. This is important because you're gonna find that during an earthquake, the safety glass or glass indeed will smash. And that's obviously gonna be awful for anyone walking beneath the building. In this way, you're gonna reduce the number of injuries. You've got things like concrete exoskeletons and steel meshwork. strengthen buildings. And how it reduce the likelihood of them collapsing. As well as building design, governments can carry out emergency drills. This involves the population practicing what to do in the event of an earthquake also involves telling them where they should go. The purpose of this is to increase the chance of survival. Also key are evacuation plans. These are shared with the population. Again, so that people know what to do in the event of an earthquake. Let's talk about GIS now. This stands for Geographic Information Systems. And crucially, these can be used before, during and after a hazardous event such as an earthquake. So there's a wide range in which GIS may help. It can help you identify road structures. And actually, I'm going to create a mini mind map. Mind maps are not my favorite thing, but I think in this case, when we discuss how GIS can be used to manage earthquakes, I think it's gonna be the most beneficial way I can display this. So GIS allows roads to be identified which enables emergency aids such as ambulances food and water supplies. GIS also provides maps which can be shared with all support agencies, therefore enabling a more coordinated relief effort, ensuring that resources are not wasted and get to where they need to be much faster. GIS can also enable you to identify where services were before the earthquake occurred and therefore where they can be built afterwards. So the earthquakes occurred, what types of short-term relief exist to help reduce the impact of the earthquake? You've got tents, which provide shelter. You've got food parcels, reduce the risk of starvation. Because that food is free. You've got emergency medical aid is used to treat injuries caused by falling debris. And bottled water, that's key when lots of water sources will have become contaminated. And that reduces the risk of contracting cholera. Now we're going to discuss longer term planning. So this is the approach that governments can take in order to reduce the impact of earthquakes. So an important one here is hazard mapping.
This involves risk assessments being made. Which inform town planners of really two things, which buildings need reinforcing and where to avoid building on. Explain why earthquakes occur at destructive plate margins. We need four marks here. So our first mark is to say that the oceanic and continental plates move towards each other. The denser oceanic plate is subducted or sinks beneath the continental plate. and melts, there is friction which builds up until seismic waves are released. Identify which of the following can be used to record earthquakes. It's going to be a seismograph. Don't be confused with the Richter scale. Remember that's used to measure the size of an earthquake. The key word here is record. Suggest two reasons why some places are more vulnerable to tectonic hazards compared with others. So obviously the closeness or proximity to a plate boundary, the closer you are, the higher the chance of experiencing an earthquake hazard. And then population size and population density is also going to be important because obviously where people are more densely living together, they're more vulnerable to hazards such as earthquakes and buildings and infrastructure collapsing on them. Explain one strategy to reduce the impacts from earthquake events. Clearly early warning systems, if people know that an earthquake is due to occur, it allows these people to evacuate, which could therefore reduce deaths. So there's the three points we need to make for the three marks. You could have also mentioned building earthquake resistant buildings such as a concrete exoskeleton which reduces damage caused by the ground shaking during an earthquake which would result in less injuries.